Hi everyone, Brandon here with GDNT Basics video question line. Today's topic is parallelism, uh, a feature of size. The question today, uh, for parallelism of a circular feature of size, an axis, can you use two surfaces perpendicular to each other that are both parallel to the feature axis as datum references within the feature control frame to make the parallelism axis reference to the axis of the intersection? Uh, the simple question here uh, to you, Jamie, is yes, you can. Uh, in fact, it's pretty common. Um, let me show you a couple of the rules and statements uh, that are pulled from the standard. And I've made a quick example drawing here that we'll go over. I pulled this straight from our course. Uh, again, like I said, this is uh, referencing the standard, but we don't make try not to make anything up here. Uh, but up here at the top it says, for feature of size orientation tolerances, uh, the first bullet here is you are controlling the angle of an axis or midplane within a tolerance zone oriented at a basic angle to a datum. So when we're talking about parallelism, uh, we're talking about over here, uh, zero or 180 degrees. Now this is implied uh, to today's standard. We do not use the, uh, uh, we don't use the square symbol for perpendicularity, although you may still see it. Um, we're not supposed to be using it. It's not necessary anymore because it, those perpendicularity would be implied at 90 degrees. Um, for parallelism, it's implied to be at zero or 180. So if it looks to be parallel to something, that is the basic angle. Uh, if parallelism is called out on there, uh, it is a zero or 180. Uh, now, that's not from a, from a zero plane here. If, if we have a datum that is on this surface over here, then it would be out here. Uh, zero or 180 degrees from it. So it, it doesn't matter what angle the datum is that it's referencing, it just matters that the feature that has the geometric tolerance back to that datum is parallel to that datum. So it has to be zero or 180 degrees. It can't be shown as anything else. If it was off by a half a degree or something, um, it will be treated, if it appears to be parallel, it will be treated as such and uh, there will not be any angle um, allowed on that surface. So the next bullet here is the tolerance zone is a cylinder um, at axis features or two parallel planes midplane features. Uh, this specific question from Jamie was about the axis. So um, we're going to be looking at this in the example drawing that I created for this. Uh, it will be an axis. The next one here says the tolerance zone is almost the same as position. Now this is key because a lot of people get this wrong. Um, only now the tolerance zone is not able to control the location, only the orientation. So remember, if, you're, if you ever see um, parallelism, perpendicularity, angularity on a drawing um, with basic dimensions, that would be incorrect, except for the basic angle when we're talking about angularity. But as far as the, the locating to, uh, dimensions like this down here, uh, those have to be coordinate plus or minus dimensions, can't be basic. Because we're not locating with these. They cannot locate. Um, if we needed location and orientation, then we would use position. Um, position will do both of those. But when it comes to the orientation tolerances, they're only going to orient. They will not locate. And then uh, down here, the next bullet, the units are still in distance units. Um, so they're in inches, millimeters. They are not angular dimensions, such as plus or minus five degrees. And then the last one here, the tolerance zone does not control the bend in the axis, so no form uh, on this one. Now, when we're talking about parallelism on a surface, um, it is taking care of form because remember the tolerance zone on that's identical to flatness, two parallel planes. So inherently it is controlling flatness, but when we're talking about the feature of size, it's not controlling the form. So only the orientation of the perfectly straight center axis on uh, this scenario here that we have. Uh, the other key thing here is it has to be relative to a datum. So in order to use orientation controls, parallelism specifically in this case, it has to be relative to a datum. Um, and because this is a feature of size that we're dealing with and not a surface, we are allowed to use the MMC or LMC modifiers. And uh, I did throw that in over here in this example drawing. So let's blow up this drawing and uh, take a look at this. Okay, I pulled Jamie's question back up here again in case we need to reference it. Um, 
what Jamie did ask was for parallelism of a circular feature of size, the axis can use two surfaces perpendicular to each other. So what I did here was I have uh, primary datum is qualified down here with flatness. So it's got flatness of 5 thousandths requirement on it. So A is qualified with a form control. Um, that's, that is typical when, when you have a flat plane as a primary datum that it will be qualified with a form control. Uh, and then when we get into the other datums, such as B, we're using orientation now. Now we have perpendicularity of 5 thousandths back to A. So that is qualifying B. And up here we have perpendicularity of 5 thousandths back to A and B. Now remember, like I said before, uh, those will be controlling form. They're on surfaces. So this perpendicularity will also be controlling flatness of 5 thousandths. Uh, this perpendicularity up here will be controlling flatness within 5. So now let's take a look at the actual parallelism. So Jamie had asked if these two datums were perpendicular to each other. So uh, B and C are perpendicular to each other. And notice I have the parallelism only to B and C. I have not uh, used A in the uh, datum reference frame. So I only have B and C. So when we take a look at this, um, Jamie had said uh, to go a little bit further, both, that are both parallel to the feature axis as datum references within the feature control frame to make the parallelism axis reference to the axis of the intersection. So it, in a roundabout way, that, that is correct. Um, where this plane and this plane intersect, we have an axis right here. So there's an axis in that corner. But remember that the way that the feature control frame, and this is, this is quality's uh, responsibility here in, in inspection, uh, also the, the, you know, the machinist making this part has to be able to interpret this and know what this means. But the first thing um, that quality is going to do is constrain or engage uh, on datum B. So that's the first requirement. So we've, I've said this many times, hopefully you've picked this up in the course, this primary datum, uh, B has become the primary datum. So it's in that location in the datum reference frame. So now the first thing that this is going to do, remember our tolerance zone shape here is a cylinder. We have the, the diameter symbol in front of that 5 thousandths. So I'm going to exaggerate this. So just imagine that this cylinder is 5 thousandths. It's quite large, but it's 5 thousandths in diameter. So if we looked at, come over here and look at the end of this part, looking in this direction. So we have these holes. There's a hidden line for that one, hidden line for that one, and we throw the center line in here for each one. So we have a we have the cylinder, and let me get rid of the center lines just so that we can make sure that we can see this clearly. So we have these 5,000 cylinders in here. So that's the first cylinder, and here's our second cylinder. Okay, now those are going to be oriented first to B. That's its function there as a primary datum is to orient that tolerance zone. So it's going to take that 5 thousandths uh, diameter cylinder and orient to B, which means it's going to make it parallel to B. So it's going to be parallel to B, but now remember this is the first function because it's primary. So try to stress that here, B is primary. So that's the first thing it's going to do is orient or make it parallel to this datum down here, to datum B. So the axis, um, it will not be able to tilt up. It will not be able to tilt down. But it can, and now up and down, remember this is the Y axis. Um, so I, I'm going to call this the y-axis. You guys can call it whatever you want. But uh, this direction here is going to be y. But now when we're looking at in the x-direction, so in the x-direction, it's able to tilt. So over here, I drew this uh, cylinder in here, but it could look like this at an angle. It could look like this and be parallel 
to datum B, um, but nothing else. So that's where C comes in. So C is going to come in. Let me get some of my scribbles out of the way here. So C is going to come in, and now it's going to set the parallelism from this one. So now what I have drawn over here, um, that's not going to be able to happen. At the bottom of my part here. So this is not going to be able to happen anymore now that we have B and C. Now the cylinder is going to be perfectly parallel to B and perfectly parallel to C. Now we could have avoided this and used perpendicularity on this parallelism. Um, and we could have done perpendicularity only to A. And that would have taken care of parallelism to B and C. Uh, all by itself. We wouldn't put B and C in there at that point. We would only use perpendicularity to A. But Jamie's question was specifically about can we put it to uh, two datums that are perpendicular to each other. The answer here is definitely yes. If you do this, now notice one thing everybody is that um, on my locating uh, dimensions for these two cylinders of 5 thousandths in diameter, um, over here in X, I've got six, in six inches plus or minus five for this one. And then for the one to the right, I have two inches plus or minus five thousandths. So that is locating from C. That is locating uh, those two cylinders. Now from B, I have two inches plus or minus five thousandths up from B. So that is locating them from the, from the B frame. So recall here, B is going to do orientation first, then location. C is going to do orientation second, and then location. So uh, B really comes first. So we're not truly coming from this axis where the two intersect. What we're doing first is coming from B, and that's first. So, and that's from the datum. It's a datum plane. So it's coming from B. It's not coming from the axis. It is coming from B up this two inches plus or minus five. And then secondly, we're, we're coming from C, making it parallel and then locating from C two inches and then six inches. So it's not really from the axis, it's from the datum planes, it's from that datum reference uh, frame that we are orienting and locating from. But there is a, if we were to line those planes up virtually and look at them, there is an intersection there. Anytime two planes intersect, there's an axis. Um, our dimensions are coming what looks like from this axis, but they're actually not. They're coming from a plane, and this one's coming from a plane and a plane. Now, one thing that we do note inside of our course is that uh, remember that whenever we're taking these dimensions, it, it states in there that from a datum reference frame, if you look at this dimension here, we're not supposed to inspect that when we are inspecting uh, the go back here we're not supposed to inspect this when we're inspecting parallelism and that's because if it doesn't relate from the datum reference frame with a geometric control and there's nothing out here on this face so if it doesn't relate back to the drf then it's supposed to be an independent inspection now i know once whenever i get stuff set up in the cmm i do everything all in one shot um, according to the rules we're supposed to when we take this eight inch dimension we're supposed to disengage from the datum reference frame because this is a two-point measurement. It's what they call a caliper measurement. doesn't mean you have to literally measure it with a caliper, but that eight inches is just going to be a two-point measurement anywhere across that face and this face along the length, but not from a perfect plane. And the reason for that is if it was from C, the perfect plane, well, then we wouldn't be measuring from the side of the part. We would be measuring from this perfect plane down here. The, the datum plane. So if we had if we had some irregularities in the surface, and it wouldn't go out that far, but let's say it went like this. Well, that would lock up against that datum reference frame perfectly, but our dimension from here to here would be skewed. Um, it could allow bad parts to pass because we're coming from the datum reference frame. So if it's not pulling from that datum reference frame, we're not supposed to be measuring it. Only geometric tolerances back to the DRF or the datum reference frame are to be taken. So, Jamie, uh, this can absolutely be done. Uh, just a word of caution. If you're going to just use parallelism instead of position, which would do position, like I said, would take care of location and orientation, 
Um, but if you're only going to do the orientation, just remember that you have to have these plus or minus dimensions in order to locate the tolerance zone uh, instead of using basic dimensions, which would be perfect. If we use basic dimensions with position, then those five thousandths diameter cylinders would be locked from the datum reference frame. They, they wouldn't move like they would in this scenario here in location. They would be locked, uh, both in location and orientation. And now we'd be taking our measurements from the datum reference frame. So, great question, Jamie. I uh, hope this clears everything up. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Remember, uh, send your questions to questions at gdntbasics.com. And everyone have a good day. Thank you.